Aitken, and welcome to another episode of The Model Guy with me, Robbie. And in this episode, I'm going to be throwing some paint down on Edward's 148 Tempest Series 2. Before throwing down any color though, I have to prime the model, and to do that, I'm using some Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black, mixed to three parts thinner to one part paint. Once the Mr. Surfacer Black had dried, it was time to come in with some AK Real Colors Dark Ghost Grey to prep the black basing for the belly. I simply traced a few panel lines and then added some cloudiness with the paint before moving on to the next color. This may seem harsh at first and very unrealistic, but once you come in with a few more layers and start adding some stenciling and things like that, it really starts to bring that paint to life. If I really wanted this paint to look beat up, I would have added in some brown tones as well, just to really change what that gray paint was doing, especially when the transparent layer started laying down on top. Once that first layer was complete, I added the sky color for the tail band. For some odd reason, the light gray isn't showing the black basing very well, but you've sort of got the idea here. You can see the black and gray tones already in place before the light gray filter comes down. And by adding layers on top of layers, I can control how weathered and beat up that's going to look. For the ocean gray on top of the aircraft, I started the black basing with AK Real Colors Gunship Gray. I then busted out my Yushi stencils to start adding some more blemishes and things around access panels and areas that would see a little bit of wear. My goal with this aircraft wasn't to have it super weathered because the Tempests weren't in service that long at this point. The darker gray definitely shows the black basing process a lot better because here you can see the dark gray and a light gray tone before I come in with the ocean gray filter. And for that, I used Mr. Colors RAF Ocean Gray, which is a lacquer paint. I do have the AK Real Colors RAF lineup, and I painted a Typhoon with them a few years ago. But the colors just seem too bright. Even after an oil wash and some more filtering, it took a lot of work to get the colors where I wanted them. Whereas the Mr. Color series seems to be very accurate right out of the bottle with no mixing or filtering needed. Once I was happy with the grays, it was time to start black basing for the RAF green, and the best color I could find for that was Tamiya's NATO Black. Even though it's black, it still has a very noticeable green tint to it, and it's a perfect color for starting greens for black basing. The next color in that process was a green from AK Real Colors called FS34102, which is from their Southeast Asia set. And then that very vibrant green was followed by a very washed out Japanese navy gray from Tamiya. Once all those pre-tones were done, then it was time to come in with the filter layer using Mr. Colors RAF Green. And again, this was highly thinned and just applied in several thin coats until I was happy with the tone still showing through. With the painting done, it was now time to peel off the masks and see how the colors really worked together. And I wasn't entirely happy. The aircraft still looked too clean. I decided to let those colors stew for the night and come back the next day with a fresh mindset and just see if I still had the same opinion. For the Invasion Stripe base, I used some AK Real Colors Insignia White.
And that was followed up by some Tamiya Rubber Black. Mr. Color Insignia Yellow is used for the identification stripes on the leading edge of the wings and for the RAF roundel that I also painted. After looking at the plane again for a second night, I still wasn't happy with the final colors, so I came in to break them up a little bit more with some darker grays, especially in areas that we're going to see a lot of maintenance, traffic, things like the fasteners, inspection hatches, all that fun stuff. And I just used some darker shades, thinned down, and just slowly built it up until I was happy. And the fun thing is, is if it was too bright and too stark, I could just come back in with the Mr. Color RAF Green and gently push it back. The markings on this model were definitely a double-edged sword. Edward's roundel seemed too light, and masking it was a challenge because it was over positive rivets that were sticking up, and I couldn't get the mask to fully seat. So there had to be a lot of touch-ups with overspray, and if I were to do this kit again, I would probably just order aftermarket decals to avoid all this hassle. I created these masks and stencils using my silhouette machine and it seems like it might be time to finally do an episode dedicated to how I do that. And if you'd like to see that process, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I used the same insignia blue for both USAF aircraft and British aircraft, but for the British ones I tend to underlie a little bit lighter blue just to kind of lighten up the randle because I find the RAF ones are not as dark when you look at black and white photos compared to the American aircraft. One thing I would like to address having done this Tempest and noticed the issue with the decal color being off from Edward is I received the Edward Mustang shortly afterwards and it had the new style Edward decals which have the very thick varnish on them. And although Edward says that varnish layer isn't meant to be peeled off, Quite a few people have figured out ways to do that. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a gamble. I know Cirque de Blindedge, I, sorry if I said that wrong, he has a process he uses that works for him most of the time. But for me, when I laid down those Edward decals, they were so thick they wouldn't go into panel lines. And it's they were thicker than Tamiya's decals, and that's really saying something. And afterwards, after they dried, I tried to peel off that varnish layer with a little bit of tape, and it destroyed the decal. So I'm not sure what Edward's trying to do there. And they've kind of stepped back a few paces because when they were using cartograph decals, I had no issues at all. But the newer style decals, they just aren't working for me. At this point, all of the painting was done and it was time to install the propeller and then test the engine again, just to make sure that it was still gonna freely spin. I was so excited when the propeller actually spun properly on this kit that it made me think of a few other ideas I could do down the road. So I had a quick look through the stash to think what in here could work from that. And there's a greyhound that's looking at me that may be the next victim. With oils being the next step, I decided to mix some panel line washes using some Abtalung oils and using some grays and blacks until I had a shade that was significantly darker than the paint it was going on. I didn't want to use straight black because that seems too harsh and kind of looks a little fake depending on the colors on top of. Once the oils had been drying for about 20 minutes, I simply wiped them off with a shop cloth. And any oils that were being stubborn, I just wetted the cloth a little bit with some odorless thinner and that seemed to clean it up nicely. The only problem is some of the rivet detail here is a bit shallow so I had to do a second wash to really pick up the rivets. For the top of the model, I used a little bit more thinner in the wash, and it was like magic watching that run along the panel lines. Something that has always been a challenge to me for doing models is working with oils. It seemed no matter what I was trying, I just couldn't get them to blend the way I wanted them to. 
And it wasn't until I watched a few more hours of tutorials from some people I respect and their oil work that I went out and bought a few new different style brushes, the biggest one being a Deerfoot Stippler. And that was a game changer for me because I was finally able to really blend in that paint and I had not been able to do that before. I then decided to go fully into the deep end, whereas normally I would use an airbrush to do my exhaust staining. I decided to roll the dice and try oils. Now just by laying down the oils in the path I wanted the exhaust stains to follow, I then came in with the stippler again and started blending them in. And it really worked and I was so excited that I came in with some grays and a little bit of brown afterwards to really play with the colors. But it just, I don't think I'd be able to do this with an airbrush. Oils were definitely the way to go. What makes oils so versatile is that you can do different things with them and if you're not happy you can just come in with some enamel thinner and simply wipe it away and restart. And an airbrush, yeah you can do that but it takes a little bit more cleanup. But you can see here on how light that exhaust staining is, I would be hard pressed to do that with an airbrush. One other technique that I used on this kit that I really haven't done before was some brush chipping. And the armor guys are probably familiar with that and all it is is you take a very fine tipped brush and you just gently stipple on some paint to make it look like it's chipped. It's one of those processes that if you do it right it looks awesome, but if you do it wrong it really takes away from the model and makes it look fake. The last hurdle on this kit was doing the exhaust, and I know Edward offers resin pipes to help you avoid any of this stuff, but if you take the time with a Dremel or a Proxon, you can really clean those up a little bit with some bits. And here I'm just drilling out the ends to make them look a little more realistic and rather than just a flat hunk of styrene. Once I was happy with how that looked, I cleaned them up with some extra thin from Tamiya. Now painting aircraft exhaust is something I still find a challenge. For this time around, I decided to use some Mr. Metal Color aluminum just to set as the base. And then I came in with some brown that was thinned down right at the mounts and then followed that up with a very, very thin layer of ocean gray. I then added a very thin filter layer of German gray from Tamiya and then came in with some steel pigments and some soot pigments just to try to make them look interesting and a little dirty. I wanted them to have at least some resemblance of metal still to them and not just be gray. And then after all of that, another pass with some black pigments were made and that really seemed to do the trick. I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out. That's going to conclude part four. I hope you're enjoying everything so far. Part five is going to conclude the entire series with addressing the base and installing the switch for the engine. I'm not sure what that's going to look like yet, but it probably will involve some 3D printing. If you're interested in seeing more behind the scenes or early access to videos, please check me out on Patreon. I'm on there as Robbie the Model Guy, and you can have a week early access and a 24-hour early access ad-free. That's it for now. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook as well, and I will see you in the next episode. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.